Hi, I'm Glenn Darcy, Vice President of Product Management for Arturia. Today I'm going to be showing you our new iPad app, iSIM. When you open the application, it opens in the main page. The main page is the page where you have the main synthesizer module, as well as arpeggiator, some of the extended voice options like the sub oscillator, LFO2, portamento, as well as your output effects, the overdrive, chorus, and delay. At the top of the screen we have the info button. Open the info button and it will take you to the owner's manual, as well as a description of what the product is. If you forget anything, you can always just access it quickly right here. At the top of the screen, you can choose your presets by just hitting the next and previous buttons, or you can go load, and then you can choose by sound designer, by type, and then by the preset itself. At the bottom, you have the keyboard that you can play. By turning this little gear icon, you get the keyboard. In here, you have controls for scroll, so you can move the keyboard up and down, and you see that it transposes the octave. You can also zoom the keyboard in and out by using two fingers to pinch. You can also use the chord play function, which allows you to play multiple notes. Just play your chord, hit the button, and now you're playing a chord. The hold mode gives you the ability to drone notes. In the center you have the scale selections, you have your standard chromatic, as well as multiple modes. We can choose the whole tone scale and you see that the keyboard changes. Now there are no wrong notes. You can also set what the default key is for the scale. So now we can play in uh, F whole tone. You have a poly and mono button here, so you can play sounds polyphonically or in mono mode. On the left hand side of the screen you've got your pitch bender and mod levers. On the original Oberheim OBX's Matrix 12's the pitch bend was actually backwards so most time pe people know pitch bend going this way um, Oberheim did pitch going up this direction and the mod amount coming back this way as well. We decided to recreate the original Oberheim and put the, the levers the same way that it has. You can also change this in the settings file to go back to the standard way that most people are used to. The next page we have is the mod matrix. The modulation matrix allows you to tie a modulation source to a modulation destination. The page itself is enabled or disabled here. And then you have eight different modulation selections. You can also choose your sources by just using the, uh, the knobs on each side and the modulation can go positive or negative. To reset the value, just double click on it. Next, we have the voice programmer. The voice programmer mode allows you to simulate the old Oberheim four voice and eight voice synthesizers. Once again, the page has an on off button. And now what you can do is every time you play a note, you will see that it steps through the different notes. What I can do is I can set up different pitches or VCF uh, frequency cutoffs or any of these different six parameters. You enable and disable them over here. So what we're going to do is go to VCO course and right now they're all flat line. But what I can do is I can go move these things around and watch when I play a single note. You get that same effect whether it's going to the frequency so you can create a lot of real moving lines based on what you're playing. The next page is the effects page. The effects offer you an overdrive, a chorus, and a delay. Over here are the mix controls for the different functions as well as an on-off enable switch. On the output, you have the output level as well as soft clipping. The next page is the performance page. The performance page allows you to have these four controls that you assign to whatever parameter that you want. So in this case, we have the VCO frequency, resonance, the sub noise mix, and VCO one course. So when I play something, I 
I have direct hands-on control with it. This is more useful in a live performance type of a mode or if you're recording something and you just want a couple of main parameters that you want to access. You also have access to the arpeggiator as well as the uh, effects mixes. Also at the top of the page is the connect menu. The connect menu is the one that allows you to connect to the outside world. You have background audio enable and disable. You have WIST enable so that you can synchronize to other iOS, iOS devices. You have a global tempo with a tap tempo. You have MIDI. We support core MIDI so that you can have inner app connections as well as external hardware. And up here you have your MIDI channels. One thing that we also support is AudioBus. AudioBus allows you to connect one device to another, in this case ISEM to GarageBand. So I can simply go into GarageBand You can record the track. We can go back over to GarageBand, look at our track display, and you can see the beautiful music that we just made. You also have multiple settings files. So going into your settings, you choose iSIM, and over here you can see you have the op options for background audio on off, the voice count, I set it to auto, but you can turn it up or down based on what your uh, iPad is. You have your MIDI channel, your sync source, and then different knob modes, whether you want linear movement of the knobs, and the wheel modes, whether it's Oberheim style or whether it's normal style. So you can also use your ISEM with any kind of a MIDI device. I'm using it with the Arturia Mini Lab in this case. Just simply go to your connect screen, Choose MIDI, and you choose the device that you're connected to. I'm using the camera connection kit to go directly USB in with this. <clears throat> On the Mini Lab, just choose program number two, and now everything should be able to work with this. See as I turn this knob, let the filter cut off. If I want to remap something, I simply just go MIDI Learn. Currently I have this knob uh, going to arpeggiator rate, but if I decide to do a pulse width or the frequency of VCO1, I just choose the knob, turn it, and it's mapped. That simple. One thing that we also support as of iOS 7 is Apple's inner app audio. In this case, I'm choosing a, uh, another application. I can select the device that I uh, want, which in this case is ISCM. Then you'll see these transport bars appear right here. So now I can arm record from here. Disarm it, go back, go back into the other app and I can see that I've sampled the uh, the audio from this. ISCM is now available on the iTunes Store.